Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am PD Orsky, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. And in this second video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on custom module development for Drupal 7, I'm going to walk you through actually creating a default flag in our module. Uh, but we're also going to look at the flag API and we're also going to look at some introduction to PHP. Uh, but it's not going to be too repetitive for my initial video tutorial series. That said, you can always visit me over at Toronto website developer.com slash store and purchase any of my video tutorial series. I uh, really appreciate that. It goes to help support the continued development of these series uh, and keep the video tutorials free. Um, additionally, if you know, you're not interested in purchasing a series, but you really want to give back, please uh, give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, YouTube does track the engagement and it helps promote these video tutorials to other users as well. Please subscribe to my video uh, channel. I appreciate that. And I do track that as well. Um, that said, let's head back over to my local development site, TWD Box 7. Uh, this is where we were for the first video tutorial in this series. And what we're going to do is we're going to first add a flag. But before we do that, I'm going to introduce you to the flag API. So I've got uh, my site here, Sites All Modules Flag. And you'll see there's a, there are a file here from the flag contributed module, flag.api.php. Um, and what this will help us do is it'll give us an idea on how we can actually link in with the flag module and leverage it in our module itself. Uh, for those that are unfamiliar or haven't followed my other video tutorials where I've kind of talked about APIs and, and Drupal and its hook system, uh, just a quick rundown. Essentially what Drupal does is it's a bunch of different code and it will run and it'll give you an opportunity to hook into it at different times. So let's say a node, uh, which is like a piece of content. So a node is saved and uh, you want to alter that node before it's actually put into the database, Drupal will fire a hook. Um, and you know, you'll, it'll say, do you want to make any changes to this? And another module can step in and using a certain naming convention for a function, um, step in and change that code uh, and, and it can be executed. Flag does a similar thing. Uh, it provides its own API and it uses the, the Drupal hook system. And so you'll see here, you get a bunch of uh, hook and then a bunch of function names, right? And so what we want to do is we want to use these uh, because we're going to be interacting with different flags, right? We're going to essentially create the flag application module. And so we need to leverage the flag module uh, and its API. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to define this default flag. Um, and so that, that, that will enable users when they actually take our contributed module, uh, enable it on their site, they will get this default flag that they can use and they can manipulate that. Uh, and the way that you do that is with uh, flag API. It's an actual hook here called hook default uh, or hook flag default flags. And you can expand. Uh, you'll see here the um, documentation is essentially straightforward. Just define default flags. And you'll see here, here's an example of the code from when they do uh, bookmarks. Right. So what we want to do is we just want to take this application or, or rather this, this function signature and we want to go back into our module open our PHP tags, delete the ending, uh, closing tags, because that's Drupal convention, save that. And then we're just going to paste this, right? And rather than define default flags, what we're going to do is uh, add a comment called implements hook flag default flags. Um, and the reason why we do that is because that's again, Drupal convention. Sorry, I got extra closing tags. Drupal convention, um, whenever you use a hook, you always just uh, add a comment that says implements and then that hook. And the reason for that is a user can then go check out that hook documentation to understand kind of what's going on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back over to my site and flag app, or sorry, the flag module uh, enables uh, this nice export ability. And so what we can do is actually be, uh, create a flag through its uh, user interface and then export that and just grab the code and import that into our module. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, so our default uh, flag is going to use uh, is going to be used on nodes, right? So nodes are a type of entity. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, you know, you can do some quick research, but essentially you have these different types of entities, um, but you can only act on certain entities, right? Uh, because they're all different base tables. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, uh, I, you know, I did talk about this in the view series. Um, so node has its own specific table in the database. Users has its own specific table. You can always relate them, uh, but because they're base tables, uh, you can only choose, um, you know, one as, uh, the, the entity to work on. So we're going to choose nodes. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And now what I'm going to do is actually set up a flag. Uh, so my title is going to be flag application because that's going to be associated with our module. You can call that anything you want. Um, 
if you were doing this for another reason. But flag application, and I'm just going to put uh, you know apply. Um, as my my link text, uh, my description is going to be what you're going to see when you hover over. So you know, apply for this. Uh, my message, thanks for applying. Right, this is uh, all pretty straightforward. Uh, unflag, you know, remove application. My description is uh, you know, remove your application for this from the site. Again, this can all be overridden by somebody who actually implements the module. Um, your application has been removed, right? This is all just default stuff. So when somebody enables the module, they're gonna get all this and they can be able to change anything. Uh, so because of that, I'm not gonna really change the roles, right? Because it's all gonna be flag dependent. Um, somebody else can add in this this, uh, this stuff here. Um, don't worry about the bundles because that will be, um, uh, you can allow it on all bundles if they're blank, but this will also be site dependent. And then again, no additional restrictions. I'm going to put it on full content view. Somebody can always override that. Uh, it's going to be a link uh, field so that somebody can play with it. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and save this. It's going to be JavaScript. So we'll go ahead and save this flag. And now if I actually go to export, uh, you can see that I can export flag application. And I get this nice code. And so let's copy this code and go back to our editor. And in our function, let's just go ahead and paste this code. And if you check out Flag API, you'll see that it looks pretty much exactly similar to the example for bookmarks. Um, but ours is using Flag application. And so it creates this first array, right? Uh, Drupal is kind of array happy. Uh, it's not a bad thing, but uh, we have this array and then we add flag application. And the reason why we do an array is if you're adding multiple flags, you could add them all within the same code here. Uh, um, <clears throat> so remember, we chose node. So entity type is node. Title flag application, exactly what we set up. Uh, global zero, it was unchecked. Um, types, we didn't define any. So that's why it's in an empty array. And then you'll see here uh, the short, um, short message for actually applying is apply. And then all of our different messages that we did here. Um, and then some other stuff that you can actually go ahead and manipulate. But again, we're not going to really touch all this. This is all defined by the flag application module for us. So we're just going to leave that, clean up some of the spacing here. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, uh, to test this out, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our site. And we're going to go list the flags. And we're going to delete our flag, flag application. And now, um, I think of the first video tutorial I talked about the devel module. Um, I can't remember if I actually showed you, but under blocks, I've gone ahead and I've added the development block from the devel module. And so what that allows us to do is actually reinstall modules. So I'll go ahead and click that. And I'm going to go down to flag application, our module. I'm going to check that off. I'm going to reinstall. Now, if I go over to flags, I can list them. And we don't get our flag. So that's a problem. Let's find out what happened there. And that's because I left the function signature as hook flag default flags, which is pretty dumb. Because what you need to do is replace hook with your module name. So that Drupal knows to actually call the hook. So I'm calling flag application. This has to be the exact same name as your module. So flag application, same thing as I got here, flag application. Go ahead and save that. Go back over to my site again. And we're going to go reinstall the modules. We're going to scroll back down to flag application. Reinstall this. Now, hopefully we go back over to flags. We see a listing. There's flag application. And if we go into edit, you'll see all of our different fields here were all created, uh, all set up by us. And if somebody wanted to, they can actually go in and change all of this uh, specifically for their site. Um, so that's it for this video tutorial. I just wanted to give you an idea of how we can use the API from flag as well as a quick introduction to how we set up our own default flag. Uh, gave us a little bit of insight into PHP, but the nice thing was that the flag module actually provided us with the code that we needed. Uh, so now we have this set up, we can go ahead and start doing all the custom things that we want to do with this module, um, like uh, a system to actually maintain these applications, remove them, approve them, and, and so on. So we'll be doing that in the next couple of video tutorials. Uh, again, as always, if this video tutorial helped you, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. Hopefully we'll see you for the third one. Take care.